Deathwind Knights are the elite's close combat veterans of the Dark Angels chapter, revered for their unmatched skill and devotion. Clad in ornate Terminator armor, they wield powerful weapons like crackling power swords or heavy maces of absolution, making them nearly unstoppable. These ultimate warriors are deployed to crush enemies, reclaim forbidden secrets and secure vital objectives, teleporting directly into the heart of battle to deliver devastating blows and achieve total victory for the Imperium. Hello my friends, my name is Max and today we are building one of the elites of the elites. We will go for Nightmaster of the Deathwing Knights. As you can see, this lad can be assembled into different options, either with a power sword or a mace of absolution. I think we're gonna go for this classic view over here with power sword and a helmet. We're gonna use these two sprues, and I got them from Dark Angels Battle Force box. We have an unboxing of this nice and very rare box on this channel. We have two sprues that we're gonna be working with today. These are the sprues from Dark Angels Deathwing Knights. One of them is necessary for the head options, and another one is actually all about assembling the Terminator himself, and we're gonna work with primarily this part. Today we're gonna take a look at this mini, how to assemble it, if it's fun to assemble, is it hard to assemble, and we will compare it with some other minis. Make sure you stay until the end, in order to see the end result, so to speak. From these instructions, we know that we can build up to one Nightmaster, which can also be built as a Deathwing Knight. So if you have, for whatever reason, a squad of 10 Terminators, you can basically replace the Master with Knights. You don't have to use Mace of Absolution, you can use the Power Sword too. We're gonna go for this look, and that means that we're gonna follow the blue instruction set, which means we're gonna do this all this and this is gonna be our end result. So we start here and we start with the torso as always. We will need bits 1, 2 and 3. This is bit number 1, the back of the torso. This is bit number 2 and this is bit number 3. Very ornate. All three bits are cleaned up and we are supposed to assemble them more or less at the same time. So I think the first Step will be putting his butt to the back over here. I'm gonna glue it. There we go. Now let's see how the front part should be assembled. Should be something like this. I'm gonna glue it too. And this is our lad's torso. Now we need to assemble legs. Let's start with the left one made from bits 8 and 9. This is bit 8 and this is bit number 9. I have cleaned up both parts of the left leg. It should be sitting together somewhat like this. And let's glue it. I'm gonna put some glue here and here. This is our left leg. Let's go for the right one, bits 5 and 6. This is bit number 5. And this is bit number six. I have cleaned up both parts of the right leg. It should be assembled like this. Let's glue it. There we go. This is our right leg. Let's see how the left leg is supposed to be attached to the body. There is a very distinct look over here. I'm gonna glue it now. Now let's see how the right leg should be attached. It should be like this. These locks are surprisingly good. They are not wobbly, very very accurate. And this is our mini so far, looking incredibly cool. We turn page and we start to add some decorations 10 and 11 on the sides. This is bit number 10 and this is bit number 11 with Crook's Terminator. Beats 10 and 11 might look the same on the front side, but they are not really on the back side, so don't mix them up. We start with beat number 10, it should go on the right side, 
you can see there is a clear look over here. So I'm gonna put some glue on this thing. There we go. This is bit 10 and same goes for bit 11. And these are our bits 10 and 11. Again, probably you want to do them one by one because they look very similar, but so the back sides is different. Now let's attach right hand with the sword and the left hand with the shield. The shield is gonna be attached at a future point. Let's start with beats 14, 15 and 16. This is beat 14. This is arm 15. Let's combine beats 14 and 15 first. They should be sitting together like this. I'm gonna put some glue over here and on this bit. Hopefully that is gonna be enough. And it will glue together while we are preparing the sword 16. And this is the cool looking sword 16. The sword is cleaned up. Looks incredibly cool. And now we should attach it somehow to the hand. It should be done like this. I'm gonna melt this bit. Not a lot of glue should be applied because the surface area is very, very small. And this is our hands with the sword. Before we attach it to the torso, we will go for the second arm, the left arm 21. This is the arm 21. The left arm is cleaned up. It should be attached somewhere here. And the funny part is that I do not know at which angle it should be attached. So I think it should be roughly like this because of the way the shield is gonna be looking on this image later on. I'm just gonna go for it and hopefully we will be able to tweak it later. I think this should be it. Let's take a look at the other arm. The other arm should be in this position because this way the sword is resting on the base. I'm gonna go ahead and glue the arm. So it should be like this. And if you are in doubt, what you can do, you can place the guy and make sure that the sword is actually touching the ground. And that is gonna be the correct position for this arm. All right. We have done this and these, so we're gonna go for shoulder pads 24 and 25, and we start with 24. This is bit 24, very, very ornate and beautiful. You know why I like shoulder pads? I like them because there is always not a lot of mold line to remove. So this is the one that should be sitting here on the right arm. Gonna glue it now. In this case, it actually makes sense to glue these pins and place the shoulder pad on top, like this. And this is our shoulder pad. Now to the bit 25. This is the Crooks Terminator shoulder pad 25. This shoulder pad should be sitting on the left arm over here. And I'm gonna glue it. I'm gonna put some glue on these pins. That should be enough. And this is our shoulder pad. Here we go. Very, very cool looking. And most of the mini is still accessible. You don't have to do partial assembly so far. Now let's go for the heads. We have options 103, 104, and 105. And we're gonna go with the helmeted 103. You'll find it on the separate sprue. As you can see, it has a skull on the helmet. This is our helmeted head should be sitting over here like this. I think this is it. I'm gonna glue it. The way you glue it, you just put some glue over here and that should be enough. All right, so this is our lead so far. Now we go for the decoration and the shield. I think we're gonna go with this decoration with a broken sword, number 28. And number 28 over here is on the same sprue as the head, in case you were looking for it. This is our bit 28 with a seal, and it should be sitting over here like this. 
you can see there is a piece of plastic that was touching the sprue, and that is what we are hiding with this Beats 28. I'm gonna put some glue here, and I am going to try to put this thing over here. In my case, it is looking somewhat like this. You might need to practice a little bit to get the feel where it should be touching. But the important part is that it just hides the defect of plastic. And now we need to attach the storm shields number 22. Number 22 is the coolest storm shields. I have cleaned up the storm shields. It looks really beautiful, extremely ornate. And now let's try to see how it should be attached. Should be something along these lines. The storm shield is probably the only beads that might require partial assembly for this mini because it will cover some areas where you might want to be careful while painting. I myself don't care that much, so I will just glue it directly. This is my storm shields. And now we need to put him on a 40 millimeter base. This set comes with a basis of two sizes. 25 for teleport beacons and watchers in the dark and 40 millimeters for the terminators themselves. I have a 40 millimeter base over here and I am going to glue my guy. So the way it usually works, you want to drop him on the base from the top in a way that places the heads roughly in the middle of the base and that is that is the case for this particular mini. And this is our end result, my friends. The Deathwing Knight's Master. You can say he is a master because he has very ornate armor and, of course, the protective shield generator on top of him. Let's double check if we have done everything. We follow the blue instructions. We have assembled the torso, put both legs on, protective things, arm with a sword, arm with a shield. Shoulder pads, a head, and a shield 28 over here. So this is our finished miniature. It looks incredibly cool. I was very, very skeptical about Dark Angels for a very long time. But now I start warming up to them. And these minis look incredibly cool. New Terminators are amazing. It took me roughly 45 minutes to assemble the mini. It might require partial assembly in terms of this shield. Other than that, I think it's gonna be more or less fine to just glue everything together in one go. The guy is wielding the power sword and the storm shield. I would give it five service cows out of five for the fun of building it. And I will give it five out of five for the easy to assemble part. The mini is very straightforward, nothing can go wrong here, apart from probably the left arm position with the storm shield. But I think as long as you do it in a some reasonable posture, it's gonna look great. Let's compare this guy to some other minis. I have a Terminator Sergeant here, looking very similar to this guy. This is the new Terminator, the Primaris Terminator, but a generic one from Leviathan Box. He is with Power Sword and the Storm Boulder. They are very, very similar, but the Deathwing Nightmaster looks more knightly, and that is why I like him a little bit more than this Terminator. Of course, the Deathwing Nightmaster looks more bulky than standard Primaris Space Marines. We have a Blood Angels Apothecary here, and uh, you can see that this guy on the left is way bulkier than the Primaris Intercessor, so to speak, looking very, very cool. And of course, we should compare the new guy with the Chaos Terminator. You can see that they are very similar in posture, almost of the same size. I guess Ruinous powers benefit to your growth. That is why Azrak is almost the same size as the Deathwing Nightmaster, even though Deathwing Nightmaster is kinda Primaris looking. It's not like old style looking Terminator. And I think, my friends, this is gonna be it for today. Let me know in the comment section below what do you think of the new Deathwing Knights for Dark Angels. If you like this video, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. It will really help me to move forward. And I will see you guys in the next video. Max is out. Take care. Bye.